going to move on from all of that previous stuff and we're going to talk about the new trailers, the, the last trailers, if it's to be believed, for both Rise of Skywalker and The Mandalorian. So what are all your thoughts on those trailers? How did they make you feel? Did you get that tingle? They, they made me feel sad. Yeah, I cried. I cried at the trailer. I've watched the Rise of Skywalker trailer several times and I've cried every time I've watched it. Now, are we discussing the trailer or are we just giving our thoughts on it real quick? Well, we can, you know, six of one and half a dozen of the other. We can talk a little bit. We don't need to go in depth, but... Right, right. Uh, there was um, the the scene in the in the, the last trailer for Rise of Skywalker when, they're, when it shows them smashing like a statue or whatever with Vader's uh, helmet on it. Yeah. Did anybody else notice that like, holding a, a dagger in their hand? Yeah, Sith dagger. Yeah, well, oh. my, my question is, is that... Because to me, it looks a lot like the dagger of Mortis from the Clone Wars. Isn't that what... I've read some stuff recently and that a lot of people are saying that. Oh, wow. And that they were saying that maybe we'll see Rey go on a, a journey and that's how she'll get her hands on it. And it's like, if if it is really Palpatine's returned... That's the only thing that can actually kill him, like, once and for all. I mean, in my opinion, yeah. I mean, I think it is, and that's what I believe it will be. It'll kind of be like that, uh, them, uh, what do they call it? The, like, the MacGuffin of the story? Mm. Mm. Like, that's what she's chasing? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Kylo Ren, I mean, in my opinion, this is just my, my thoughts on it. Is that that's what... Ray, I mean, Ray's chasing that. Kylo's going to be trying to stop her. Blah blah blah. There's fight scenes, but I don't necessarily know like how the uh, dagger of Mortis would have ended up in Kylo's little collection there. But mm. but then I suppose he's a he's a Sith fanboy. So in some yeah. ways, you kind of say maybe that's what he's you know he has been building this collection up. He's been sending his minions out to scour the galaxy to try and find anything related to the Sith order and, you know, any, any remnants of the past and things like that. And he's built up his own little kind of creepy sort of museum of artifacts, <laughs> you know, he, put, he puts on his granddaddy's mask and breathes in it. Uh-huh. Yeah. While he's in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with, his, with his huge chest. Exposed. And breathing panties. He's like, he's strangling himself at the same time, you know, and he's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know Kylo Ren's into some sick shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, right, yeah. Wait, wait, what you do in the bedroom is your business, Dom. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> hey, look, this is not Geek Dom exposed. This is not secrets revealed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Geek Dom After Dark. <laughs> yeah, Geek Dom behind the mask. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I th- I think it is. That's what that I think that's what that dagger is going to be, and it's definitely going to be like you say, the MacGuffin. It's going to come into play somewhere along the lines. But that whole bit as well was confusing because you get the other bits in the trailer where they're fighting each other, and then at that moment they seem like they're united, and then it's like, is it a statue? Is it a petrified person? Is it even real? Is it like um? You know, like the going into the force cave and things like that. It's like, is it is it is it supposed to be figurative rather than literal? Right. Yeah. Well, a good a good uh, point about that is in that exact same scene, the background and the scenery that they're in, it kind of looks like the old Death Star. It's the throne room. Yeah. That's exactly um, where it is. It's the throne room from the Death Star. Because uh-huh. obviously that's one thing we know about this film is that they go to the Death Star and that's presumably where they encounter the ghost or the whatever he is, you know, the, the clone, the reincarnation of the Emperor. So that that is indeed, that is actually the throne room from from the original trilogy. Right. Yeah, I just... To, to answer the <clears throat> the original question of, like, you know, how how I felt watching it. Mm. You know, I don't know. I for the first time I, I I'm not terribly excited. Okay. Cause I mean for for me, like I, I love the Emperor and I, I think he's like he's probably the strongest, like from a character point of view, the strongest character in the whole franchise. Cause mm. he sets about this unattainable goal. 
and he systematically makes it happen, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just, it, it, it feels like it lacks a certain cohesion. And, you know, JJ's gone on record as saying, you know, well, I've, I've never read a book where the last chapter had nothing to do with the first chapter. And that's, that seems like a fair point to make. Mm-hmm. But if, if the, uh, you know, third third of your book deals with one villain and then you bring back the villain from the first thirds, it, I don't know, it just seems kind of weird. And, and I say that even like being a fan of the EU arcs where the Emperor was resurrected and you, you had all the clone shenanigans and things like that. I don't know. I'm just afraid that Disney's going to take this opportunity. You know, they're going to bring them back and then shit down the throat. You know? Yeah. I understand that. And, and just based off of, like, the other characters that we've got, you know, so if the Emperor you know, a red herring and Kylo Ren is really the bad guy, or honestly, I would hope that Ray would be the bad guy. Yeah. You know, like I kind of hope that she turns and that the Skywalker who rises is Kylo Ren. Yeah. You know, he rises I mean, out of the darkness to redeem his family legacy. The, the interesting thing about that is obviously the, uh, we didn't really get, it in the the last trailer but the trailer before we had that whole bit with what appeared to be dark ray where she had that right. really weird like swiss yeah. army knife double-ended <laughs> lightsaber you know which was really strange i don't know what you guys thought but like yeah. the motion of it just looked really janky and weird it yeah. was like when she unfolded it, it was like what is that supposed to be like it yeah. just doesn't look right it doesn't look very, it doesn't look very my favorite thing about it was the yeah that came after it that came after it. The memes. the memes, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, all the memes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was lots of them. But, you know, we got to see her. It looked like she was a Sith because yeah. she had a hood on. She was, like, looked evil and dark. But then you go, is that, though, again, is it one of these, um, you know, like when Luke sees himself yeah. when he strikes down Vader right, and when like the mask breaks open and him. it's his face inside and uh-huh. it's like, is it going to be one of those moments where... It's not really, that's not really happening. It's her going through that, like, facing her fears thing. And it's like she has the potential to become this evil, you know, this power that maybe rivals or surpasses the emperors. But that's all it is. It's not actually something that's going to happen. But if it did happen, it would be a really good twist because we have had her set up as being the hero. So in the last episode for... I mean, it, it'd be poetic as well, in a way, for oh, yeah. the the member of the Skywalker family to have his redemption arc again, just in the same way this happened in the previous films. So he would redeem himself because he would realize that, you know, he's completely got everything wrong. He's like, you know, oh, this isn't right. Ray's, you know, going to be a tyrant. If she rises to power... Right. everybody will fall before her boots sort of thing because of how powerful she is. And then he has to then turn to the light in order to strike her down and restore the balance, you know, or, or whatever. I mean, that would be really, really good. But I personally don't know whether that's going to happen. Right. I like the idea. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but the idea that that is another Ray that's in the movie, that Ray is actually a clone. Yeah, and I have. Yeah, yeah, like thing. in uh, yeah. Last Jedi, where she shot, where there's like a whole line of her. Yeah, she's mm. that thing and looking for her parents, but it's just her reflected back. Right, her like a thousand times. You know, from the Force Unleashed, I could see them going the Star Killer yeah. route, where yeah, and it's believable that Palpatine, because Palpatine knew about the cloning facilities on Kamino. Yeah, they got destroyed. But he would yeah. have, as emperor, he would have the means and all of the motivation to get those cloning facilities back in order. And he had already created a virgins in the force with Anakin, right? Yeah. So I could see him doing that. I, I could see Ray being another force virgins. Well, I mean, that's what one of the things is said about. Um, do, do you guys know about the original beginning of the Force Awakens? 
Uh uh-uh. uh. Like that ended up being cut. What they originally had planned for it. No. No. The very first shot, the very beginning shot we would get before we got the traditional here's a big ship coming in from overhead like <laughs> shot that they do in every Star Wars film. Right. Yeah. It was going to be Luke's hand floating in space. Oh, yeah. So it was going to be Luke's hand that got cut off in Empire Strikes Back floating through space. And this speculation is that that's how Ray came into being because the the hand got, you know, it got got by somebody. Somebody scooped right. it up. And they used the cloning facility to gene splice Skywalker DNA with Palpatine's DNA. Oh, my God. And in order to create this ultimate jedi and then that would go on to explain why ray is as powerful as she is right. and how she's able to do the things that she's able to do without going through intensive jedi training and things like that because she was bred to right. be right. the ultimate force wielder right. and also along the line there she also then maybe had been bred to be the host body for the oh. lingering will of the emperor oh my god yeah that that actually that that that's beautiful i like that wow yeah no, <laughs> i i i like that our two main characters you know ray and kylo some shared motivation and mm. I, I think that they've that that's kind of been one of the the undertones yeah. throughout this trilogy is like they're after similar things, mm. but they end up on different sides of it. And and I think the best way for that to come to it, you know, Kylo Ren, while he's he's accepted the mantle as like the bad guy, I, I think reluctantly. Yeah. You know, for him to pursue some sort of artifact of Palpatine would make sense. And mm. if if Ray even if Ray's not not a clone, the Emperor would sense her. Yeah. Uh, so he, I can see him reaching out to both of them. Mm. There's the book, isn't there? The book that came before The Force Awakens that details a little bit about Snoke. Um, when Snoke was exploring the far, the outer rim, the far reaches of the galaxy, and he encountered a presence. And that presence was what set him down the path of, you know, constructing the First Order and effectively kind of resurrecting the Sith and. Right. all of the stuff that went with it. And it's right. like, well, the maybe larger... that presence, yeah, the presence was actually the emperor and he's been pulling the strings the whole time. I mean, that would be perfect for him. It's just the, the what, what, make, what would make it feel disconnected for me is, you know, in all six of the movies, I mean, except for, you know, four, he didn't make an appearance in four. But if you watch the other ones, you know, you, you see him operating behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, and he gets some screen time, which I think is important. But, you know, we can't help that George Lucas didn't know if the first movie would, you know, be yeah. successful. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, you get these hints like episode one and says, oh, I'll be I'll be keeping an eye on you, buddy. Mm. You know, and just like kind of. That finesse. I, I think that that's what's missing from the sequel trilogy, and I hope that they find a way to I, I, not necessarily retcon, because then I think that that makes them look weak. You know, mm. like own what you did, even if I didn't like it. Own what yeah. you did, and you can fill in some gaps. Mm. You know, so I would expect some sort of extended flashback sequence. You know, to explain if Palpatine was pulling the strings, how the fuck did he do it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we're going to get, there's going to be some level of retcon because, you know, we know that, you know, Rian, Ryan, however you want to say his name, Johnson. Yeah, I like, I like to uh, pronounce it like this, uh, Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Jackass Johnson. Um, <laughs> no, but that sounds cool. That actually sounds that like, that's like, cool, a, that sounds like a Kurt Russell character. You know, like, <laughs> you know, what, like, Jack like he's this, Johnson. yeah, this renegade bad guy that breaks all the rules but always gets the girl and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. But then he's an Jack, Ed, Ed Jack, Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, Jackass Johnson is too cool for him. <laughs> I mean, I personally like to pronounce it Rihanna. Rihanna, Rihanna Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> but the retcon thing, obviously, we know that he 
he threw out certain concepts that JJ set up in the first one. Right. And now JJ is getting them back on track because it's like the whole thing, like, for example, with the Knights of Ren. So right. we had the right. Knights of Ren got introduced in Force Awakens and then everybody forgot about them. Yep. And yep. that was it. And there was no mention of them. They never showed up. And, you know, a lot of people were thinking, oh, in the trailers when Last Jedi came out, that's who's in the, the throne room with Snoke. Right. It would have made sense for the Praetorian Guard to, like, be the Knights of Ren. Mm hmm. Yeah, but it turned out that that wasn't who they were. And then JJ goes, oh, yeah, we're going to address that. The Knights of Ren are going to be in Rise of Skywalker and stuff like that. And you're like, that's great because you're bringing something back right. that you established that then got screwed up by somebody else. Yeah. Right. Well, see, the thing about that in The Last Jedi was that uh, Ryan Johnson actually said that he wanted the, the guards to be the Knights of Ren, but he had the plan for them to kill them all anyway, and he didn't want to ruin a good idea like that. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Which hmm. is the only thing I can really appreciate about it. But then it's like <laughs> the whole thing about Ray's parentage. Like, oh. that was a thing in the first film, and then the second film, the way it's so offhandly dealt with, like, your parents were nobody. They were nothing. Man, they yeah. were, you know. They, they were alcoholics. Yeah, and it's like they just dumped you, and and then you go, but that doesn't make any sense. Why is she so force powerful and sensitive? If they were no, they've got to be somebody. They've got to be. She's got to be related to the Kenobis, or she's got to be connected to this person, or something. Right. That's what Obi Wan was doing all those years. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like the speculation, but I think that's one of the the best parts about wars is that you can speculate, like, wait, who is who? Um, and but then it also brings into to, to question, you know, from the storytelling perspective, and I'm not defending the movie. Don't ever mistake me for defending The Last Jedi. <laughs> but you do have to call into question how reliable of a narrator is Kylo Ren when he's, on one hand, he's literally reaching mm. out his hand saying, join me. Yeah. Come with me. yeah. You know? I mean, I said this, I said this at the time when I saw the film, and there was all this, you know, a lot of stuff online about that. And I said, yeah, but the thing is, he's manipulating her because he yeah. wants her to join him in the dark side. So right. if he, like, breaks her spirit and says, you're not important, you're a nobody, your parents were nobodies, so it crushes her spirit, it makes her easier to manipulate. That's how I read that scene, and that's how I like to think that that was the case. It probably wasn't i think it was him just kind of going oh yeah let's forget about that whole thing to do with her parentage but i like to see it in that light instead and i'm hoping that that's what because again jj said that that's all going to be dealt with in this film and if what we've spoken about previously turns out to be the case that she's a clone or something then in a way it would then justify some of the last jedi because you go like you know, like you guys said about the um the scene with all of the versions of her, and like Caroline said, you know, she only saw herself and things like that. It's like maybe that's because she's a clone. That's right. why there is nothing other than Ray because she wasn't created in the conventional sense. She was artificially created, and right. the reason that Kylo, when he maybe tries to get a read on her and says you're a nobody and stuff like that, is because yeah, she is a nobody because she's not a. A conventional human being she was created by probably by the Kaminans, and you know she was grown in a laboratory so she is a nobody in terms of she has no lineage that would be great if they tie all that in and pay all that off i'm wondering whether i'm hoping for too much and saying right. if i wrote star wars this is how i would write it but i'd you know i oh, i don't know i'd like that would you guys be happy with that if that sort of all ties together in that kind of way i i think what would what would tip it over the edge for me is like definitely being good because one of my problems with ray is that she hasn't really struggled with her morality mm. you know whereas kylo ren i mean every he's time compelling. yeah every time you see him he's conflicted and whether he's you know whiny kylo from the force awakens you know throwing temper tantrums or he's the more you know somber kylo from the last jedi I, yeah I'm, I'm genuinely interested whereas ray she doesn't seem challenged by any of that stuff ray reminds me mm. of like you get dropped into a, a video game and you're just like people are telling you what to do and she's just doing 
whatever she has to do, I don't feel like I know what motivation is. But that's just what I feel like. I want to know, actually, Caroline, from like a female perspective, because there's a lot of stuff (laughs) in the fandom about Ray being a Mary Sue and all of this lot. But a lot of the vocal opposition to Ray tends to come from a lot of male sources. Mm -hmm. So as you as a woman, like looking at her, you know, as this sort of strong female protagonist and stuff, it's like, you know, what what's your take on her from that perspective? Like, do you feel let down as you like, like? as a woman looking at her and going oh she hasn't earned anything she hasn't grown or are you going yeah go for it sister sort of thing you know uh, I'm not very yeah I'm not very you girl um with Ray just because I like I said I, I I don't really feel like I know what her motivation is sometimes I feel like I get a little glimpse of something underneath and then mm. it's just back to like NPC, like, okay, let me just keep doing whatever I have to do to get to the end of the story where they want me to get. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I want like some sort of passion from her, like whether it's like some sort of Raylo, like her being into Kylo Ren or her being like, no, fuck it. I am my own person. This is me. Fuck you guys. Dark side, light side, whatever. Yeah. Gray. Like, just give me something. Hmm. I think your clothes are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> she seems fun to cosplay, uh, but I, I just, I, I want to, I, okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to turn, turn sort of the, the attention back to Jesse for a minute, because you were saying earlier before you were on about theories and sort of ideas that you had about certain things. Um, were they anything related to what we've already discussed or was it, has it already been covered or did you have something new like that you thought about all of this? I probably did. You said you had a theory or you had a, an idea about something. Oh yeah. I mean, you already touched on it. Uh, speaking about Ray possibly uh, turning to the dark side and then Kylo having to come in and be the savior. Mm. I don't know. I think that would be a better way to go about it because it's like, um, it's like Caroline just said, you don't really feel like you know anything about Ray, so I feel like a victory on her end wouldn't really feel like a victory. Yeah. I feel like it would just be like just the way a typical story goes. Mm. You have this person that is the hero figure, and the hero figure has to win at the end of the day, and that's and that's all that it would unless you had some big twist like that where Ray does turn to the dark side and then Kylo ha- it it wouldn't really feel like a complete story to me yeah yeah sort of a paint by numbers kind of thing yeah they need to pull something big out of the bag because this is the end of this saga Mm -hmm. you know so they've got to go out with a bang they've got to pull out all the stops they've got to use all the tricks and do everything they can to make this sort of a monumental occasion so i think doing something like having that big twist of raise the bad guy that that would be epic. Turns out you know, that, that would be a really big one. Very well explained. Because like, there were those, those ideas going around earlier on in the sequel trilogy. Like She, she has been put in an induced state of uh, amnesia. You Ooh. know, And that could explain why she's got all latent powers. Hmm. You know, because she, she had trained, perhaps, or had been taught. Um, but... Something came to light that revealed that she was dangerous. And so perhaps Luke Skywalker or someone else wiped her memory of that. And, yeah. you know, the spirit of the Emperor has just, like, been dwelling in her the whole time, you know. Mm. I mean, and I think that'd be a good reason that the Force awakens. Yeah. And then maybe, like, when they go to the Death Star, it then... It it does have that awakening, and the spirit of the emperor comes out of her, right? And then that's when you get that weird scene from the trailer where it looks like he sat in a floating throne, and she's like s- stood there looking up at him, mm. right? Now, so maybe yeah, like you know, the the spirits emerged when he's at the site of his supposed death, like that all unravels and she's unlocked, and he comes out, and you know sort of returns, or semi-returns to power or something, maybe. 
One thing I want to say quickly in terms of The Rise of Skywalker, I mentioned before about how it actually made me cry a couple of times. Yeah. And the reason, there were two reasons. The first moment that I cried, and I don't mean cry, I'm not like, I wasn't sat there bawling and stuff like that. I probably will be when I go and see this in the cinema because... Oh, yeah, totally. I'm a... I'm a bit like now I'm like Kevin Smith in the I cry at everything. Like since I hit 40, like I watch pretty much anything I watch is like, oh, my God, I can't believe that's how you know, like the amount of tears I shed through Marvel movies is unbelievable. I mean, no, I'm, I'm with you. Like Same. both both of the uh, the Infinity movies. Oh, God. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. The oh, my game gosh. And, like, yeah. Mm. So much crying. Tears. Oh, but yeah, no, I, I'm with you. Whether I like it or not, the movie that is. Yeah. I like crying. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think it's going to get us in the feels because yeah. it was the moment, it was the bit where you had the shot and it was with C-3PO and they asked him what uh, he was doing. And he yeah. says, I'm taking one last look at my friends oh my God. and it was just like oh my god because you're like he literally is because that's it anthony daniels c-3po that's it they're done yeah. no matter how much more star wars happens in the future he won't be a part of it and right. so that that really got me because i thought that's not just him talking as the character uh, c-3po that's, yeah, that's him it. as the actor yeah and so that really hit me and then the other bit that really hit me was the very very end where you hear luke's voice say about you know, the, the iconic line, yep. Force yep. will be with you. And then, and then you hear Carrie. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And you just, they, they gave Carrie the final always. And that, again, just got me. I was just yeah. like, oh, man. Like, you sons of bitches. You manipulative getting me in all my, you know. <laughs> <In> all- <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm with that. Like, we the, when the trailer um, dropped. The, the teaser trailer, that first one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the the tagline was, nobody's ever really gone. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that just resonated because, I mean, I know it's been, it's been a couple of years since Carrie passed, but, mm. you know, thinking about it in terms of the films, like, all three of them have died, basically. Yeah. And, and it's just really sad because these are characters that we care about. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I, I, no matter how many times I cry, every time I see Han Solo. Oh yeah. You know, mm. and I, I, I didn't feel that way about Luke dying because I was, I was too pissed off to be sad. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I feel like he'll probably get, you know, the as an audience, we'll get the emotional release, we'll get that catharsis that we're looking for with Luke Skywalker in this movie, this yeah. final movie. Yeah. I feel like you know what? he's going to have a proper send off. What I'll be really disappointed about is if they don't do, and in some ways, yeah, you might go as cheesy, it's cheap, but I feel it's also, it's sort of right to do it for the actors, um, is I would like to see a force ghost moment at the end of this film in the way that we got in Return of the Jedi, but this time we've got Luke, Han, and Leia. Totally agree. Oh, my God. Yeah. And that'll be me. me. I'll just be... Ah! Just, like, I the will tears stop. will just be everywhere. Oh. I'll just be spraying out all over everybody around me, you know. Oh, no. Because I, I think that would just be... It would just be a nice little homage to them. Yeah, I... I can't think too hard about that or I, I will cry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I want to ask you guys something, though. Getting off the topic of crying, talking <laughs> right, about... Right, yeah. Uh, welcome to uh, the Crycast, cry where we talk... Yeah, the, this is, this is crying, with, uh, with, crying with geeks. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a thought about the whole Luke situation. Now, we had the whole thing in... Last Jedi, where Luke is not really where we think he is. And then we see him on his own. And then he just pieces out and leaves behind just his robes and he's gone. Right. And it was like, oh, so he's now one with the force. He's, you know, he's just become part of the force now. Right. Shortly after that, a little while after that film came out, they did something in the animated shows, didn't they? Which was they introduced something that's never been introduced to Star Wars before. Time travel. Yeah. Uh, and they said, oh, time travel is a Jedi thing. It's something that only a select few know about. It's like a forbidden technique. It's 
only a few people knew how to control it and right. all of that stuff and they brought in because then they did the whole thing with um with your with your cat <laughs> with yeah, um yeah, yeah our, our, our fat cat you know yeah like <laughs> they they obviously used it to pull her out of harm's way and stuff like that which has also then led to a lot of people speculating that we might actually get to see her appear in a live action form in this movie i would lose, I would lose my mind yeah so that would be cool to see but Ahsoka. I mean, especially like skinny, thick adult Ahsoka. version. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, because they, but didn't they cast, there was a casting announcement for a black actress and I can't remember what her name is, but she was playing an unspecified role. <gasps> and it was like, maybe. Please. Oh, yeah. Maybe we're going to get our wish and we're going to get to see a live Please. action version of her because that would just be amazing. But. What, like going back was, to the time travel. Thing. Yeah, the the time travel thing was. What if that's what he did instead? What if he didn't disappear? Because there's signs. There are a lot of signs that Luke is part of this last movie. And there was a. I don't know if you guys remember, but it was like a year or so ago. There was a still that was released. It was an image from this movie, and it was clearly Luke. It was a hooded figure who looked like he was on a desert planet, and it looked like. He was using the power of the force to pull down an Imperial Star Destroyer from the sky. We've seen an Imperial Star Destroyer buried in the sand. Yeah. We saw it in The Force Awakens when we first met Rey. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what if Luke, that was Luke? Like, the reason yeah. that Star Destroyer is there is because he was the one that pulled it down. Right. And he's, that's what he's, he's actually traveled back in time. And maybe somehow this whole time travel thing is also going to, tie into the whole stuff with the return of the emperor and all of that kind of thing right because because the thing about the emperor was he studied both sides of the force and so i could see you know luke you know in learning the history and you know how he spouts off in the last jedi like i don't know you know maybe maybe he sought out the more forbidden techniques and and i could see some credence to that mm. idea of time travel because i think it was the novelization of the last jedi the first chapter is just Luke kind of having a daydream about an alternate timeline. He stayed on Tatooine and he got married. Yeah. Really? Uh, maybe, maybe that wasn't a daydream. Maybe that was him experimenting with that power. Wow. Okay. That would be cool. Hmm. See that just. That being said, I, I don't know that time travel needs to be in Star Wars because like. Yeah, it's it's sciency because you know space, but really yeah. Star Wars is a fantasy story. But you know? by because they introduced it into the animated series, and because the animated series is canon, right? It means that time travel does exist in Star Wars now. It just means, oh, yeah. that, you know, we haven't seen it in the live action sense. It, it could be interesting. I just I, I I would be hesitant because like Endgame already kind of did that yeah mm. you know and i feel like they did it like I, I don't see how star wars could up you know show up the yeah game time travel story mm. that that's my only concern with it. i it was just you know it was just a thought i just thought it was interesting because the you know the, the the way it worked you know of that that happened in that film and then shortly afterwards the stuff came out that oh time travel exists in star wars and then the that uh photograph that came out a year or so ago and then all these things i was just putting them all together and going what if you know what if maybe you know and then and then the whole thing about the backlash about everybody was disappointed that oh luke should have got a big bigger exit than that it should have been more you know a, a more fitting ending for his character right that then you kind of go ah but they right us. so this is what he was doing yeah I, yes. I can get on board with that but speaking of, you know, people being upset about it, and this will be prop, this will be my last gripe, I promise. Okay. Last Jedi, you know, an appropriate send off. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the cinematography and everything about you know ramming the the like leadership into the Star Destroyer. Yeah. I, I think I think the character who did it was wrong. I think it should have it been, been Admiral Ackbar. 
Oh, okay. He would have, you know, going back to that whole, like, pranking him on the phone thing. And yeah. actually kind of cool. Admiral Akbar calls Hux and is like, oh, is this Admiral Hux? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, guess what, bitch? It's a trap. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because Ad- 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 Akbar got a bit of a disservice as well. Yeah, yeah, like, killed his, off his exit was and talked shit about him. Yeah, it was really crappy. I I really didn't like that because I thought, okay, he might not be one of the core characters, but he's also he is right. a very he's a big character within the Star Wars fandom. And yeah, I think he was given a you know he was he was done a disservice in the way that they treated him in that film. All right, uh, Mandalorian, Mandalorian. Mandalorian looks yeah. absolutely amazing, dude. It's like it reminds me of uh like those old West movies, like the old Clint Eastwood movies, man, where it's just you have the mm, long range. It's definitely got a yeah. cowboy vibe to it. And yeah. And I up until the last from the first trailer, I was expecting him to be a mute character for most of the series. And then at the very end of this yeah. uh last trailer, he got that the first speaking line that you've heard from him. And I don't yeah. know, man, it gave me chills. I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's oh. about to be a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, with all of that being said, you know, I'm, of course, I'm excited for a new Star Wars movie. I'm also hesitant. But The Mandalorian, on the other hand, looks amazing. I, <laughs> yeah, I am unabashedly excited about that. Like when I saw the, the final trailer for it, I was like, okay, yep, Disney Plus, we're getting yeah. it. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you've ever watched Arrested Development, mm-hmm. and I've watched it probably 50 times, Caroline can, can definitely attest to that. Oh, he's not joking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of my favorite characters in that is playing himself. Mm-hmm. And Carl Weathers, and Carl Weathers is going to be in The Mandalorian. You get a little Star Wars, yep. a little Carl Weathers, mm-hmm. throw in a ham bone. Baby, you got a stew going. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being like, Holy shit, is that Bill Burr? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, oh and then God. uh then Gus from ba- Breaking Bad, he looks like some sort of either like an imperial officer or like a uh like a bounty hunter. Are we on a, wait, who are we talking about here? Gen- Giancarlo Esposito. Yes. Yeah. Um yeah, well, I thought he would look like he was um imperial, like an imperial commander of some kind. Yeah, he looks pretty, like, high-class and regal. Mm, yeah. Definitely important, I would say. I mean, what's going to be so interesting, and I don't know if you guys are up to speed with the latest kind of rumours and things about this show, but um, it's set five years after the events of Return of the Jedi. Oh. Okay, cool. But apparently the timing of when it comes out is quite significant and that there's something that's going to happen... In I don't know if it's the first episode or whether it's going to be one because there's only eight episodes, six of which right. will be out before Rise of Skywalker, and that there may be something uh, in the Mandalorian that's going to be significant in the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, yeah, they they like to do this era of of Disney Star Wars. They they like to do their cross promotion. Mm. Uh-huh. I, I could definitely see that. And I mean, if anything, it just makes me more excited for the yeah. show. But yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just think it looks great. And honestly, I th- speaking to like the future of the series, mm-hmm. after the Skywalker saga wraps up, I think maybe Star Wars should should stick to TV shows, yeah, or like, like series, because you know George Lucas's original inspiration were the little like radio dramas yeah. and you know flash gordon and mm-hmm. all of these serials um and, and i think that what he did what he captured you know he was able to adapt something that worked really well in his own you know upbringing and i think that's what disney's trying to do but it, it's it's just not working a hundred percent yeah and i think that with the tv show i mean i, I think that's just the preferred medium Mm. you know anyway it gives them longer to tell the story as well they don't have to rush it and try and cram it into like two and a half hours or whatever they can you know, right yeah they've got eight, well, eight hours worth of tv character time. development is tough in a movie what is sorry 
uh, character development. Yeah. You know, like if you stretch it out across eight, you know, like the Mandalorian eight hours, we're going to get to know this Mandalorian fellow mm. very well. Yeah. You know, and, and I think it's just, I don't know, as a fan that that's what I want more of is like deep character driven explorations. And that's why I'm excited about the series. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it just looks like Star Wars as well. I mean, when I saw the first trailer, I went, I can't believe this is a TV show because right. the yeah. quality looks like a movie. Yeah. Right. You know, and all the different aliens. So we've got all these familiar looking alien species that we've seen over the years in all the different movies and the ships and the planets. And it just looks, it's like, it's a spectacle for the eyes, you know, looking at it, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah. oh it looks amazing. And then it also right. seems it's like it's going to have, a, a movie. yeah. And it looks like, it seems like it's going to have a really good, very gritty premise. But the other thing is the fact that we don't really know anything about it. Yeah. Like, we don't know what the story is going to be. We just know it's going to follow this Mandalorian bounty hunter. And there's something to do with like the remnants of the empire. And that's kind of it. We, we don't really know what the story is going to be. So that again is really exciting because it's like, I'm really hyped for this and I've got no idea what it's going to be about. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Going in blind, you know, and just being excited for a new story. You yeah. Know? I mean, th there's no speculation like, Ooh, is this, I mean, there is speculation because the Star there's Wars community, you know, like, Ooh, it's Boba Fett. Like, and that'd be fine. You know? Oh no, they've made it clear that it's not. He's a, because yeah. the thing is, okay. they, they've established as well the fact that obviously Boba Fett and, and Django weren't Mandalorians. They they wore the Mandalorian armor, but they weren't Mandalorian. Uh, right. Whereas this guy is Mandalorian, and he's a completely separate character. Um, there were things I read ages ago that there was the possibility that we might get a cameo from a Fett might show up. You know, we might see Boba Fett like make an appearance. And we oh. may also see some of the other familiar bounty hunters from that era might show up. But this well, guy like, is his own character. In the newer trailer, there's a Trandoshan that appears to be attacking mm -hmm. the Mandalorian. Yeah. And just because I love Bosk, I'm yeah. kind of hoping it's Bosk. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the same. I was like, oh, I really hope that that's who that's going to be and not just a member of his species, you know. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it, it does look awesome and I'm really excited. And, and like I say, it's exciting as well, hearing all these little tidbits that, you know, the timeline is not by accident and, you know, the way that it, it's going to have so many episodes out before Rise of Skywalker and that there's going to be some significant connection between it and Rise of Skywalker. And it just makes it all the more exciting. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I, I can't say enough how I'm excited for it. And then, then there's the game, which comes out next week. Fall in order, man. I don't even know if I don't even know if I have words to describe the way I'm feeling about it, man. Like I get a tingle when I think about it. I just hope <laughs> it's going to be. I'm I'm hoping for the best, but I'm cautious as well. You know, because of the history of them messing up Star Wars games. It's like I really hope that they nail it this time. I think they might, but I yeah, I'm still a little bit on the fence until. It actually comes out and stuff. As long as the gameplay oh, yeah. is solid, that's all. That's all that's going to matter to me, man. I mean, I could do with a half decent story as long as like the gameplay is solid. Have you heard the latest about it as well? That it's going to be like a. They basically said it's going to be like a Dark Souls. Oh game yeah. Oh yeah. The, uh, I kinda, it's yeah, going to be really yeah, difficult. Look at the gameplay. It, it totally plays like a Souls game. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Like looking at the gameplay trailers, like it. It's not anything like the Force Unleashed, you no know, hack and slash. Like mm. it's, yeah. it's gonna be another game that we have a bit of, what's the word, uh, rivalry in. Rivalry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When it, well, yeah. When when I get my hands on it, yeah. But okay. I'm excited for it, and as I've said, I've got my reservations, but. At the same time, I am from what I've seen of it, everything visually and the the information, the game information that has come out. I have got high hopes for it. Right. I, I was certainly more reserved, you know, after like the initial trailers dropped. But after the batch of gameplay has come out, you know, yeah. we see like 
you know, because EA telling us that they're including a campaign in a story, ugh. I mean, it, it, it's been disappointing to say the least in the past, and mm. I was afraid it was going to be like a five-hour campaign that and for sixty bucks, yeah, you know, mm. or seventy, whatever. Um, but after you know watching videos of people who got their hands on it, you know, and talk to developers about how long it is, you know, I, I feel like it's it's it might actually be a complete game, which yeah. You know, we haven't seen one of those in like ten years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm ex- I'm excited for that now, and, mm. and uh, you know, I, I I hope, especially where you know you've got your uh, I I can never pronounce it. Is it Sekiro or how do you pronounce that? Um. Well, yeah, you can say Sekiro or Sekiro. Right, and you where you've got your Sekiro, you know, series going. I I feel like you you'd actually be pretty good at it. Just looking at the gameplay, because it's, it's got, you know, intimidating boss, you know, encounters where you've got to parry, dodge, and be yeah. very tactical and intentional with everything. Mm-hmm. And my fear is that because I'm not good at games, <laughs> that, uh, my learning curve will hamper my enjoyment of the game. So I might have my brother-in-law play it while I watch. <laughs> I, I was going to say, just get Caroline to play it instead. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know, we know about the two of you. She's the pro gamer, really. I, mean, I really am, really the pro gamer in this relationship. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, everyone knows if you've watched any of our videos. You know, she is the pro gamer. It's true. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'd I'd love to play it on the channel, but it's just a case of getting it. So yeah, just you know, if if anybody out there feels kind enough to want to help me get it, then by all means, <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't object to that, and I will happily play it on the channel for your entertainment. But well, well, I mean, we're we're casting good vibes out into the, the galaxy. Hopefully, the galaxy will provide the force. Yes, will the find galaxy. A way. The, 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 the force, force will find a way. <laughs> You know, there's there's a reason those stormtroopers missed our heroes. The Force found a way. Right. Yes, the rest absolutely. Are... There was another thing I wanted to talk about, and it was just a quick thing going back to the um, the rise of Skywalker. Is that talking about uh, you know missing stormtroopers missing and stuff? Have you heard about the fact that there's going to be Sith troopers in this film, and that yeah. they're apparently Force sensitive? What? what? Mm. I hadn't heard the, the second part. Oh, that. Ugh. So I don't yeah. know what that I'll what that have, I'll have means, to see it in but... action. In, in on paper, that sounds cool. I I just I, I I my fear is it'll turn into you know like uh, Spider Man Far From Home. Mm-hmm. You know, in that last battle with all the drones, where it's just a huge CGI clusterfuck, and it's like. I mean, I think something cool is happening. You know, that that would be my fear if if you've got like a whole battalion of force sensitive mm-hmm. dudes in red is yeah. that it would just be like a visual vomit. Yeah, they would they would have to film it very specifically, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like mm. I would think duels would be fine, but like a whole brigade of those I, I Yeah. I think it'd be overwhelming. Mm. I just remembered that, and you just you made me think about it. Yeah, maybe they won't miss. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, you never know. Um, <laughs> we will see indeed. What about, okay, so the future. So your thoughts for the future of the franchise. What do you hope to see? What are you looking forward to? Thoughts on the Obi-Wan TV show? Thoughts on the proposed Ryan Johnson TV uh, series of movies? Uh, I don't want any more, Ryan. They they can, yeah, they, they can stay gone. Yeah. But uh, Obi Wan, really, the only that's the only yeah. thing I'm really hopeful for right now is that they do a solid Obi Wan series. And honestly, mm-hmm. as much as I love Star Wars, I think I'd be good after that. Well, they've said that there's going to be a break. We're not going to get another movie until is it 2022? Oh. So we're going to have a break from Star Wars. We're going to obviously have the TV shows, but we're going to have a break from the movies for three years or so after Rise of Skywalker. Oh, okay, yeah. See, that I think that would be plenty of time for them to, you know, like actually make a good movie. Mm, yeah. We don't need another solo. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> um, thought. What about your thoughts on the um, the scrapped trilogy? Now we've learned that Benioff and Weiss will not be making a Star Wars trilogy now because they left slash got sacked slash pissed off everybody by saying, "Yeah, we knew nothing about writing when we started making Game of Thrones." <laughs> what? How do you feel about them leaving the Star Wars world? Are you disappointed? Well, I mean, do you not care. I'm not going to say I'm disappointed because I could go my whole life without seeing like Chewbacca slamming another Wookiee. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, but that's the thing. We weren't going to see that. This was the proposed idea. I don't know if you guys know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm starting to think of the Christmas special again now. Um, The um, the proposed Christmas special. Yeah. That yeah. The triple Xmas special. The idea that they apparently had was that they were going to tell the origin story of the Jedi, that this trilogy was going to go right back, like beyond Knights of the Old Republic, beyond all that, right back to the very beginnings of how the Jedi Order came into being. And it was going to be loosely based off a what's again now classed as Legends uh, comic book series where they dealt with. I think they were I think you would have pronounced it the Jedi or something like that, what the origin order was called. Right. And that's what they were going to tie into. It was all going to be about how that came about and then how the um, schism developed and how the Sith came into being and all of that. kind. Of, that was what their Oh, so was. we were going to see a bunch of old crusty dudes slamming each other. <laughs> yeah, we were going to see we were going to see Chewbacca's great, 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 great times. However, many grand making out with Palpatine, getting his hairy junk out. Yeah. Nice. Yes. OK, I want that show now. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of fan fiction. Caroline can read it. Oh, yeah. Caroline can read it to you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, outside of that, the only other thing that we know about is the Rogue One spin off series that they're developing for Disney Plus. What, I didn't know anything that? about that. Yeah, it's going to be about, is it Cassian Andor? Mm-hmm. It's going to be about him. And it's going to be the same actor and everything like that. So they're getting, and they're also going to get some other, probably some other cast members from Rogue One back for that series because it's going to be a prequel series as well. It's going oh, to be so it's going to be before, the events, before the events of the prequels. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not before. The, no, it won't be before the prequels because Rogue One happens between um, three and four, doesn't it? But it'll be, it'll be before Rogue One. Yeah, happens. man, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd be, I'd be down to watch that. I mean. I don't know a whole lot about it, so mm. I can't really give my thoughts, but that's something I'd be interested in watching for sure. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you're on on the on board for that at the moment, and you'll keep your eyes open to hear more in the future. Keep your eyes yeah, open to hear cool more. To... I think... How did that... <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cool, though, if they did, like, a <laughs> spy oh, thriller. Tom, did you just get hit with a... That was, a that was an Irishism there, that was. I was like, you know, my granny story say, can you hear me looking at you? and stuff like that it's like um, <laughs> so yeah keep your eyes open for things you might hear so let's move on master yoda says that you know impossible to see the future is but what would you like to see in the future what are your thoughts on the obi-wan series and and beyond that if you could pitch anything to disney to make star wars wise what would it be so I feel like I can speak for both of us. Okay, Star Wars will be much better off with less Ryan Johnson. Yeah, yeah echoing what Jesse said, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Je- Jesse, you made a good point. Like, keep keep, keep him away from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, this this might be kind of a hot take, but, you know, aside from, like, the minute and a half or two-minute sequence where Darth Vader's just tearing through the Rebels... Mm-hmm. You know, like I, 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 I didn't overall care much for the Rogue characters one. in Rogue One. Yeah. Okay. And I think that was because I felt like, you know, like to me, Jyn Erso wasn't she wasn't a super compelling protagonist, and I felt like, you know, her her dad, the scientist, yeah, or the engineer or whatever, mm-hmm. I felt like he would have made a more compelling main character because he had that previous relationship with Krennic. You know, and he was just trying to live his life. Maybe we'll right? see. Maybe we'll see more of him though uh, in the in this series. 
you know, maybe. And, and I love Matt Mickelson. I'd, I'd love to, to see more of that character. Yeah. Cause like, that was the most interesting story in the whole movie mm. was this guy who gets pulled into this project. He wants nothing to do with it assumes the remainder of his life, but he, he's, he manages to, to get a jab in, you know, under the emperor's nose. Yeah. So, I mean, what was his, that was G- Cassian, Galen, wasn't it? Galen Erso. Yeah. Galen Erso. Mm. Yeah. I, I'd like to see more of him. But, you know, hopefully we get that in the cast. I mean, I'll watch it. Yeah. But at this point, I don't, I don't feel any kind of way about it. What about the Obi-Wan series? Obi-Wan! Ooh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I want it. <laughs> Ewan, McGregor, uh, Ewan McGregor is my man crush, and I can't wait to see him back as Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. Like, I when I, I watched him like you know i mean kathleen kennedy ate up that press yeah Ugh. yeah that's a recommendation for you star wars out out get kennedy on the outs mm. um but you know you and coming out on stage and saying i'm gonna be playing obi-wan kenobi yeah oh, oh and and i'm glad it's not a movie you know just based off of how i felt about this generation of, you know, Disney Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm hoping that, because I think it's going to be like a six or eight episode run. Eight episodes, yeah. Eight episodes. And even if it's just one season, I could see there being an entire arc, you know, just watching Obi-Wan come to terms with what has happened and what will happen. Because I, you know, I think they've said it's going to be set eight or nine years after the events of uh, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, that's that's uh, the timeline that we're going to yeah. be in. Um, which right. also, so he's going to be protecting young Luke Skywalker, yeah. you know, making sure he's going to be good. And I like that. And I want to see, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but because this ties back into an earlier point about Solo, is um, Darth Maul is out there. Yeah. Yep. How would you guys feel about that? That seeing them to have another dance in the Obi Wan series. So, and and this, so okay. <laughs> I, I, I feel I I feel a lot of feelings right. Now. Okay. Um. So, I would love to see that final encounter done right. Yeah. Because Rebels did not do it right. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, you know, that that opinion is what it is. I didn't care for it. I felt like it was, it, it was beyond anticlimactic because they'd had a rivalry that stretched like 30 years. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they have this, like, they go out in a whimper. Yeah. You know, and that, that's, whether Obi-Wan is an old man or not, he's still strong with the Force, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he could have conjured up enough energy to to actually have a decent fight with Maul, who was still very much strong. Yeah. I mean, he was training Ezra. Yeah. You know, it's like, I I felt like Rebels really did both of those characters a serious disservice, you know. And if the Obi-Wan series could do it right, then I'd be more than happy to to watch it. I mean... You know, I mean, and Rebels didn't totally screw it up. Yeah. I mean, they did, but, you know, they they (laughs) had a good a somewhat founded canonical reason, you know, like Obi-Wan put his lightsaber up the way that Qui-Gon Jinn mm. did and that tricked Darth yeah. Maul. But to say that Maul went all those years learning something, I mean, like, the dude became a, a major crime syndicate leader. Yeah. You know, you don't get that far in, in the galaxy without learning or mm. to learning from your mistakes. Yeah. So I, I'd, like, I'd like to see it, that encounter done right. I mean, the only problem, I suppose, with them doing it is that now that they've been establishing more and more that the animated shows are canon, if they right. do that encounter in the Obi-Wan series, then it will kind of counteract the encounters that they had in Rebels. It would create right. a or, kind or of maybe it convoluted timeline, wouldn't it? Because it'd be like, well, one of these now doesn't exist. Like, that right. you can't... Well, and I can see it... 
you know, being, like I said, a, a non-lethal encounter, mm. you know, like, but that wouldn't be terribly satisfying either. Yeah. So, I mean, the more I think about it, maybe it's just, it's just best given that canon is what it is. Maybe Maul shouldn't make an appearance. I just feel that maybe that was the reason that they did it when, you know, in Solo, the reason they had that you know, seemingly mm-hmm. pointless reveal at the end was because yeah. they were thinking ahead yeah. and they were like, so we can bring him back into the movies and then that way we can have this thing. Because at the time, obviously, they were planning to make a series of Obi-Wan movies. So I wonder whether that was a plan at the time was bring back more, have him as the the reveal thing at the end. And then that way we can then establish him for him to show up in the, you know, to challenge Obi-Wan. Um, so I don't know. I just feel like maybe that's still part of their plan for the series, but I, I, oh, I don't know. It's hard to say really. I mean, I'd like to see a Darth Maul series, honestly, because like if they're going to go back, and explore some of these fan favorite characters. I, I think, you know, like a Breaking Bad style Darth Maul show. <laughs> you know? Amazing. Like, yeah, I mean, because we we see some of his criminal enterprises explored in Clone Wars, and he's really good at it, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I think that could make for an interesting show. It'd be good, good fellas, but in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, all around excited about the Obi Wan series. Yeah. You know, they, they've got Ewan, so I mean, they'd have a hard time screwing it up, or maybe they wouldn't. But I'd have a hard time recognizing it by those beautiful eyes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like he just smiles, and looks at the camera, and I'm just like, like, oh, you. Oh, oh, he's yeah, yeah. he's he is definitely he is a handsome man for sure, and <laughs> yeah, I can I can see I can see the appeal for th- yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, so we we touched on obviously there with Jesse about the the cancelled trilogy that the Game of Thrones guys Benioff and Weiss were going to do. What what are your feelings right. on that? Like, are you? Are you glad? Are you saddened by it? You know, how are you indifferent? How do you feel? Well, so if you would have asked, if this would have happened to you, yeah, then I would have been like, no. But now, <laughs> having witnessed the the abomination, the colossal fucking shit shit. Yeah, yeah. There we go. that should go on yeah. the DVD case, Carol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, colossal fucking shit show. <laughs> yeah, that that should be the subtitle of season eight. Yeah, but like, it's like, okay, what if they have something else that they were interested in, like when they got halfway through Star Wars and they were like, all right, let's just uh, whatever. I guess I, or we're, we want to look at this thing now. So fuck the fuck what we're working. I think on. that was part yeah. of the concern because they signed a big deal with Netflix as well. So I think part of um the mm. the Lucas division at Disney and stuff were like, wait, so you're not going to have your focus on this because you're going to be juggling all this Netflix right. stuff, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately I, I, I would, I was definitely in what they were going to do with star Wars material. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you, you heard me rant quite extensively about how pissed off I was about the character assassination of Luke Skywalker. I, I, I don't want any more of that in, in my story. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was season eight. And not just for one beloved character, like but several. Yeah. all mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. Entire character arcs just get flushed down the toilet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it, I, I'm fine with them not being involved. Yeah. Mm. I, I like the, I, the concept that was described, you know, yeah. like the beginning of the Jedi and like, you know, the first awakening to the mm-hmm. force, like that would be crazy. Yeah. And I would like to see that in like a serial format, mm. you know, like, cause think about, think about how people would perceive, like, imagine if that happened in people would think that you were crazy. Yeah. You know? And so maybe the show could balance that whole, like, I don't know, am I crazy or do I have this, this mm-hmm. amazing hidden potential? Mm. Yeah. So I, I, I see that concept just rife with, with potential. Um, but as, as for, like, the future of Star Wars, 
I, I think it needs to go in that direction. I think the go to the past. Yeah. So you, would, you, me, would you agree with Jesse in that you would like to see a, a Knights of the Old Republic TV show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the first two games, I mean, that's enough story for, for probably three or four seasons of TV. Mm. You know? And I, I'd be fine with that. I, I, would, I wouldn't want a series of movies. It would have to be a TV show. Yeah. And like I said before, I think the future of Star Wars is more in, like, things that you can binge, you know, like TV series and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to see more. What about other things you would like to see, Jesse? What, what would you like them to do? If you, could, if you could go to Disney, Kathleen Kennedy and stuff tomorrow and say, I want you to make this shit, what would you get them to make? A pod racing TV show. <laughs> as in like in like, the style of NASCAR. yeah like a real thing like a real like it was on every week and they actually have real races or a series <laughs> a fictional uh, series no a fictional series i just want like a dozen child actors all named anakin skywalker <laughs> <laughs> it would be like wacky races yeah what with woogie trick slamming each other <laughs> yeah Wookie races. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll put a real spin on race to the finish. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's what you would go for. I have all, this, you could get them I have to make... all this freedom and creativity to create my own show, and I just want to see Wookiees getting it on during pod, pod racing. racing. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, that seems pretty extreme. I, it, it sounds like Disney might bite <laughs> If they don't, HBO. HBO will, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or FX or something. Or yeah. like uh, or like a Knights of the Old Republic style TV show. Where it's like set in that era. Oh, Knights of the Old Republic yeah, TV like show? on Disney Plus, okay. like uh, set in that era. Yeah, that'd be cool. Not a movie, a TV show. Okay. Definitely a show. Like 20 seasons. Again, that you could see that. Yeah, that could that could be HBO's new Game of Thrones, couldn't it? Yeah, twenty seasons of ten episodes per season. I'm I'm on board. I like Heck it. Yeah, we're gonna sell that shit to HBO. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thank you very much for that, Jesse. So, if you could walk into the offices tomorrow. And pitch an idea and say, this is what I think you should make next for Star Wars. What would it be, both of you? Me first? Okay. Um, I've been going on a little mind vacation ever since you asked that question to Jesse. Okay. Because I was like, oh my God, I'd, I'd never really thought about it before, but I, okay, I've got it. Now, maybe I'm the only person who would be interested. Are you talking about, about Wookiee porn? No. Jesse already talked. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> the after dark show um <laughs> no i want like a nature documentary but but star wars like they're going to like different planets Ooh. and they're like look at this is a loth cat and like we're gonna learn about this loth cat and this is right. like a what it, this is this creature and this is that and it's just like like a tagruta woman just trekking around just being like wow yeah. nature's crazy you've got you've got attenborough narrating oh man i can imagine that now it'd be like like the walking with dinosaurs series they did years ago but like with star wars uh aliens and you know monsters and animals and things yeah i want that like like when you guys were talking about the mandalorian and you mentioned that there were so many of the different alien species i feel like so many of the movies will just forget that there's this plethora of amazing species out there that they could explore Mm. And I love that they're doing that in The Mandalorian. And I really want to see more of that because I'm, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover I'm a, and I'm a girl. And I want to see, <laughs> I want to see cute, cute and weird animals in this alien universe, in this mm-hmm. crazy galaxy. I, I, like, I like that idea. Um, Thank you. I'm wow. So, I'm enjoying my mind vacation. No, it's, I mean, it, I... <laughs> there right i, I, I like a, just a little silliness where it's like oh yeah come on guys let's get on the ship yeah. <laughs> 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 across the galaxy 
Mm-hmm. We explore the frigid world of life, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, I want that. The native wampa, the male wampa, goes looking for a female companion, you know. He's we- looking for mate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I need that. That's okay. great. I love it. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> what about you, Nathan? You got to top that one now. I, I, oof, I, I really should have gone first because she had the much better and creative answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I I've already said it, and I I'll stand by it. I I would say because I mean when we went to celebration, you know, old Republic and especially Kotor era characters are. Re, are resurging in popularity. Yeah. And so I, I would say just just look at your demographic. Look at, at mm-hmm. the costumes that they show up to that aren't from the mainline movies Yeah, and aren't even canon. Yeah. But people yeah. cling to the Old Republic characters. So yeah. I, I say you, you do... You could even do two series. You know, one where it's just KOTOR, uh, KOTOR 1 and 2, and then a second series... That is like, you know, like the MMO, where it's like, you know, maybe a hundred or a couple hundred years after those events have transpired and the Great Sith War has allegedly come to an end, yeah. only to see the Sith rise again. Mm. You know, I, I, I just, I feel like that's an untapped gold mine for Disney. And I think that they're just, I don't know why they're afraid to use the, the old... EU stuff because mm. it, it's it's source material that people have already responded to emotionally and critically. You can readapt it, and it's people will it's see been that. it's been talked about on and off for years that there's been all these conversations that they're going to adapt stuff into movies or TV shows or animated series, but then it, nothing ever comes of it, right? And it's always bizarre. It's like, why Why does that conversation start, but it never ends with anything, you know? They just drop that idea and go, oh, no, we're going to, like you say, it's almost like they're afraid of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and, I mean, I, I can I can definitely understand the hesitation because the, the, the scope of the TV show I would have in mind, I mean, I'm thinking Game of Thrones budget, you know, you go all out. And the problem is that they'd be adapting a series of video games. And, yeah, and adaptation is already difficult, you know, going from a book to a movie, which are essentially the same thing. Mm. When you go and adapt a video game, it, it's a completely different animal because the whole point of a video game is to give the player some sort of agency in allowing them to make decisions. If Whereas, I can, if I can just interject there quickly, yeah, yeah. It's not just the games, though, because there are books and there are comic books that detail a lot of that era, too. So they would be able to pull from lots of different source materials. Oh, yeah, like the the Revan book. Mm, Yeah, yeah. I love that book, by the way. Oh, my gosh. So they they would have a lot of material that they could, like, pull from here and there. Well, yeah. Oh, so now that's got me thinking this is probably more feasible than i had originally thought so that gives me hope you know i I let's do it when i go to disney that i take you with me and say all right all right i have some reservations but my boy dom he's he's gonna dispel all those notions (laughs) yes and i will i will dress up like the mayor from halloween town and i endorse this kotor well let's make it at once And then they'll all, they'll all look at me and they'll be like, what are you? <laughs> I'll just sidle yeah. out. Like, I'll, I'll just shift out like a crab and leave you there on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and as you're shifting out like a crab, you just, you, you do the Zoidberg thing. You're like, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, dear. Well, yeah, I, I'm on board with that. Obviously, Jesse's also said this about Knights of the Old, Old Republic and things like that. I, uh-huh. I would like exploration of that era. But for me, yeah. if I could go into tomorrow and pitch something, a character that is so beloved and yet we know very little about, Yoda. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I want to know his origins. I want to know what planet he comes from. I want to know yeah. what happened to the rest of his species. I want right? to know how he became a Jedi. And, you know, I want to know what his journey was from humble beginnings to becoming, you know, the or one of the most powerful force yeah. users in existence and history. Yeah, yeah Grandmaster. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a title held by very few. Mm. And that's something they have never, never, ever explored. Yeah. No, I, I, that's got me thinking now because one of my favorite arcs in the Clone Wars, and it, it I don't think it's a, a particularly popular one with a lot of the fan base, but I loved it, was uh, in that last season they did. Yeah. Where they sent Yoda on like a several episode yeah. journey to, so that he could learn how to connect with the Force when he died. Mm-hmm. I mean, because... Any, any 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 story dealing with Yoda, you're inherently learn more about the Force. Yeah, and I I think that that's one of those things. Like people, writers are probably afraid of that. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, or or maybe the studios are more afraid of it. There's no law, you know. It's like, and I think that he's probably. I mean, I may be wrong here. There may be other characters that are like this, but. He's the only one I can think of off the top of my head that stands out as the only solitary member of his race that we ever see in any of the films or any of the other connected shows or books or anything. Right. We never encounter another being that's like Yoda. Yeah. Right. And I think in, in the, in the Canon EU, I think that there's been some sort of story about his master. And I think his master is model. Or something like that. Mm. Um, and I think Yaddle might have been of the same species. Yeah. So, I mean, but all the same, I, I, I like that trail of thought because as far as we're led to believe, he might be the only one. And they yeah. live so long. So what happened to them? What happened to this entire culture, this entire, you know, species of living things? Yeah. Because we don't even know what he is. We don't even know what his species is, do we? I don't think so. Caroline, can you confirm that? Because I think it just says your race. Yeah, I've tried to. Let me see. Because I... All it says on here is, yeah, just like humanoid. Like, mm. it doesn't that's not a race. What he is. Yeah, that's just wow. describing it. That's not... Like, yeah. I want it. That kind of ties in with my, <laughs> my, my, like, wanting to see more <laughs> of the... <laughs> yeah, the, the nature documentary could be to visit uh, Yoda's Grand planet. Master. Yes. <laughs> Yoda like, could be like David Attenborough. He could be the person that does the oh, show. Yes. Oh my god, Dom. <laughs> you've got a you've got a billion dollar idea right there. There we go. <laughs> See, that would sell, wouldn't it? Worldwide. It could be like the new blue planet or, or any of the shows, you know. Oh. It's like the band of this is to meet every once who does. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, yes. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I think oh, we've true. I think we've struck gold. If anybody stumbles across this, anybody that's connected to Star Wars in any way, you know, my my information's in the description box, you know. Right, right. And and uh we we you know, these this is our intellectual property. You take it, that's property theft, we'll get you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You have to hire all of us for and bring us in because clearly we've got a lot better ideas than any of you lot have got going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. But yeah, I, I think on that, I think we ride out on that high note. I think so too. <laughs> I think that, you know, we, we draw a line and yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining. Where can people find you? They can find me on YouTube at your local anti-hero or on Twitter by the same name or on Instagram by the same name. I'm your local anti-hero <laughs> and I yell at my camera a lot. Yeah. Excellent. And obviously the links will be down in the description box for that as well. So thank you. Also plug geekdom merch. Yeah. Links in the description. <laughs> yeah. You, you plug me as well. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, (laughs) yeah awesome thank you Jesse thank you for your time this evening and man really thank you for having me man I was really excited when you messaged me the other day 
Jesse has told us where we can find him on the internet. So where where can you guys be found? Uh, we can be found on YouTube, you know, under Erratic Ermine. We've got a, a Twitter yep. by the same, you know, at Erratic Ermine. I think there's a space in there, okay. like Erratic Space Ermine. <laughs> uh, we've got an Instagram too, but we don't, we don't update that a whole lot, so... Yeah. But if you want to go like all those things, go ahead. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And hopefully we get back into the groove, you know, here in a bit and we get back to uh, putting out our Undertale videos. And we had started playing Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, I'd, yeah. I'd love to finish that. Caroline doesn't know the story. Mm -hmm. I really uh, enjoyed that. I really enjoyed watching you guys do that. And just the, the, the little things that, Caroline, you were coming out with, I had me in stitches. I was just laughing and <laughs> The, the fascination with that. Why is this happening? And why is he doing that? And like, if I go in here and what if I stand here, maybe he won't see me and all this. Oh, it's was just it was so funny. Trying to do things that you physically aren't allowed to do in the game, but you were trying to yeah. do them. It was brilliant. But yeah, you, you guys need to come back. You know, I mean, I, I speak for me personally, but hopefully for a lot of other people, like I miss, I miss seeing you guys out there and I miss seeing your videos popping up and stuff. So Right. And, and, and I, I feel myself getting back into the swing. You know, also there's, there's, you know, I, I picked up the new Digimon game. I, I, that, that's for another podcast mm -hmm. though. Hopefully we'll get back to it. Excellent. You know, we'll have to take a break when we go to Scotland, yeah. but you know, it, it'd be nice to get back into it. Cause yeah. I had forgotten how nice it was to, you know, be reminded like, Hey, this is a, even if you don't get huge and famous mm -hmm. or anything, you still get to meet cool people yeah. who in ways that you would never be able to anticipate are able to brighten up your life. Yeah. Absolutely. Like this, this whole thing tonight has been a huge propel forward for me. I know mm -hmm. like being welcomed in here. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It was lovely when Nathan said about wanting you wanting to be involved and I was like, absolutely. That'd be fantastic. So it's been mm -hmm. great that you've been on board with this as well. So thank you for, for joining us for this. 100%. And to, to anyone listening, thank you. Yes, thank you. If anybody's out there <laughs> at all, if anybody's out there in the and you, you're listening to this, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully we've entertained you. Hopefully we've given you something to think about. Check out all these awesome guys' links down in the description box. And you can also find the links down there for my Twitter so you can follow me. And there's also the Merch Dom as jesse mentioned before if you want to rock some geek dom merch and you want to represent the kingdom of geeks and show your allegiance then the link is down there for that there's also a link for green man gaming which is my affiliate link if you're in the market for any digital games go through that link i'll get a commission from the company it doesn't cost you anything extra so you'll be helping me without helping me and also the links are there for my donation mediums if you want to help uh, but at the same time you're not under any obligation to do so and <laughs> until next time if there is a next time enjoy the future of star wars enjoy the mandalorian and the film when it comes out and remember the force will be with you always, always.